Cine-a fost aia de pe mine Și m-a prinsit de sărută în mea Ara m-am să ai până Oh, 
Oh, 
So let's continue our study program, which has been going on for months. So the goal of life is to establish our long lost, covered, loving relationship with the Supreme Person. How to establish it? There's a process given by the saintly person. And we have discussed previously with our spiritual master's teaching that what divides us, what separates us is the contamination that has covered us. It is lust, material disease, and it is situated in the mind. Lust, anger, and greed and it is centered around simply my own interests, my selfish interests, what I want. My will will be done. But the problem is that it's not, not, not my natural position. Through our studies, we can see that we are always dominated. That's, a simp that's very simple. We're dominated by material nature, other living entities, we are dominated by so many factors. And because of this, it's very hard to meditate and focus with the goal. So the quest or the endeavor becomes tedious and, and openly it's hazy. And one simple fact is we have been covered by this material conditioning. So the spiritual master guides us to enter that world wherein our meditation will enhance our longing, our focus, our endeavor, our desire to please, to do what is pleasing to God, to Lord Krishna. So it is a process that will foster or result in having a pure loving relationship with the Supreme Person because we will be able to see what distance us, what separates us from that world that is transcendental. And it comes with the purification of our consciousness, our heart and our mind, not by our own process, not by our own endeavor, not by the ascending method, but not but by our strength, but rather it is appreciating 
God's love for us. So being individuals, we have choices. We make decisions. We have this freedom to make decisions. But the problem is when we try to play, play Lord, try to dominate material nature, this decision-making encumbers us. It begins a struggle for us. And it takes our time. It covers us. It always drives us to anticipation, trying to pursue a goal, hoping against hope to achieve this inner peace. Not only inner peace, we want to experience the sweetness of a relationship that is eternal. In this world, relationship here is a perverted relationship with the Supreme Person, with, with God. Because our relationship here is based upon our dominion. We play surrogate God. And the one we're supposedly relating to also uh, try to show that she's needed or he's needed, that she can or he can satisfy you. Everybody's trying to play, Lord. But the problem is we are not self-sufficient. And not only that, it's focused upon this temporary material world, this body, this field of activity, a vehicle, a machine that we're in. So we must become free from this illusion. It's an illusion. Have you seen those uh, in movies? They run after this, the person they love, and when they embrace it, it's gone. That, it's like that. When the living entity, us, try to repose or direct our love upon this temporary world, you cannot embrace anything. Because even the body that embraces that body of that person will be gone. And you'll just be there. Lonely, confused, nowhere to go, unfulfilled, an empty heart. And it gives sadness to the Supreme Person, our eternal friend, our eternal master. That's why he comes to this world, to exhibit his pastimes, to invite us. So Lord Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago. In many, many years previously, he appears to entice us, to show us a world where we can be with him eternally. And that world, for example, when Lord Krishna came 5,000 years ago in Vrindavan, the resident of Vrindavan, they don't see him as God. They see him as the most, the, the, the mother, the father, Mother Yasoda, Nanda Maharaj, the loveliest child, the sweetest child. And the young girls, they see him as the most attractive person. And his friends who just like to play eternally with him. We are given this world through the disciplic succession, the instructing spiritual master passing on the pastimes of the Supreme Person. In this world, we discuss about everything that's temporary. My family, the Philippines, the country, it's all about this temporary world. And there's no stability because everything here will pass. And you, the person riding in this machine, trying to grasp, trying to control, comes to a point of confusion. Not only confusion, no motivation, no inner strength. You look at the statistics of those individuals who were really great entrepreneur, who were able to make a lot of money. In the end, what did they have? They stand there, and then they're so empty and lonely. Look at the great stars. How, how did they leave the world? What kind of life were they living? A life of hedonism. Searching for happiness in this material world. 
trying to find relationship that will satisfy their heart. They sing songs, the greatest love of all. But in their heart, they can never grasp it because it's all sentimental and imagination. But it is a longing of the soul, the person, us, looking for someone to love eternally. And Lord Krishna comes, manifesting his pastimes, giving us this opportunity. If we're able to see that and appreciate that, we can understand where we should be, a world that is eternal. And the greatest happiness that one can share with the person he loves, either your wife, your husband, your child, every living entity, is to give them the opportunity to come in contact with the Supreme Purifier, with the, the cause of all causes, the all-attractive Supreme Person, Lord Krishna, who comes as the holy names. So the spiritual master gives us a guidance and that guidance is centered around meditating in meditation, what we do with our body. In a contaminated state, our meditation is focused upon trying to experience the flickering sensual enjoyment through the senses. So when we become clear, clear-headed, with clarity in our mind to see our true identity as a different energy from matter, our meditation now will be, will glide towards our true eternal shelter and happiness. But in ignorance, it's very hard because there is a force that drives us. It is lust, anger, and greed. It's all about selfishness. All of us here, we're very selfish. It's all about us. I, me, mine. I, me, mine. Even in tears, you cry, it's about you. In happiness, happiness, it's all about you. In distress, it's all about you. You are all alone <coughs> in this dark, empty world. And you're trying very hard to experience fulfillment and shelter, looking for a friend to love eternally. Through God's love for us and mercy, we come in contact with the glories of God, the activities of God in the spiritual world. That is the problem with so-called faith and relig so-called religious group. They want us to be religious, but they don't know the real meaning of religion. Spirituality is different from so-called religion and faith. The focus is all about them. It's like this. When someone came to my Guru Dave, showing him, you join us, you can have the kingdom of God. My spiritual master asked, where is the Supreme Person? No, he's living in another kingdom. You can have his kingdom. So this material world is also like that. It's God's kingdom. But the problem is the center, we are the center. So all the suffering, all the pain, you experience it. And then when you're tired in this desert of material life, when your heart is burning with fire, empty heart, and your lips are all parched, and you are already blinded. You have become deaf. You cannot hear anymore. And then reality comes to you. You have to leave this world. Then when you leave this world, what do you really have? All the meditation, all the focus, all the activities that is simply self-centered will be there to manifest in your mind a world of sadness and emptiness, a world of separation from so-called happiness that you're trying to grasp. So the spiritual master, the confidential friend of the Supreme Person, comes because of his love for Lord Krishna. So the problem is not 
God loving us, He loves us unconditionally. The problem is us. We become so self-centered. We have become so selfish. It's all about us. I, me, mine. That even the relationship that is supposedly religious, spiritual, it's based upon material things. You relate to the person who loves you eternally, the cause of all causes, your eternal friend. You treat him as someone who is your provider. We don't know that Krishna knows everything. Not a blade of grass moves without the knowledge of God. When Lord Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples, he was telling them, why are you so worried about yourself? Look at the birds in the sky, the lilies in the field, who takes care of them? Why will not, why won't God who loves you, whom you're trying to be close, not take care of you. He takes care of us, but we cannot appreciate. We are always looking through the senses and trying to look for the oasis of water through this material world. This desert sun. So when one becomes purified, by coming in contact with the Supreme Purifier, he can now appreciate that when Lord Krishna tells us, I'm the, I'm the light of the sun, the taste of water, the wind, everything that's here belongs to him. And he provides us, he's providing already. But the problem is we're not living simply. Our life is so complicated and we are always searching for Fulfilling our material wants. What we should be seeking is our spiritual need. And what is that spiritual need? It is the sweet flavor of rendering loving service with someone you love. Spiritual life is about love. It's about caring. All we have to do is to be in harmony with the transcendental world. And to appreciate that, Lord Krishna tells us, gives us guidance through his instructing pure loving servant, the spiritual master. Never you see people talk, supposedly teaching about God, the beauty of God, the kindness. It's all about what can we get from God? How will he protect us? He's already protecting us. We're always afraid. We go, Lord, Lord, don't let my mother die. But with wisdom, you know, nobody dies. For the soul, the living entity, you're eternal. This body is temporary. You're a different energy from this body. Your life. But the question is, we're living in the world of death. And our activities is about meditation upon the world of death. That's why we're always empty hearted. We have no life. But how do we portray it? By, you know, the girls, oh, I think I'll be loved if I make my hair bland. They dye it, you know. Somebody who's, I've seen a friend, wow, her complexion is very dark. But I saw, oi, Americana naman, di ba? What, does, what did she do? She bleached the body, you know, put glutathione whatsoever, you know. Then I saw this friend of mine before. Her face is Asian. Her nose is not really like that, you know. Then I saw her. Oh, how come your nose is so, you know. You cannot even see the tip of your nose, you know. Why? Why do we do that? Because we feel lacking in our heart. We want people to appreciate us. <laughs> Look what I got. It's a world that is empty. So we should focus upon the world that gives us fulfillment of our life, our heart. And that is our pure relationship with God. So the process we follow in this Disciplic chain 
is assessing, trying to see what separates us and engage in activities that will foster connection, what that is pleasing to God. That's why if we study, I was brought up, I, we were discussing yesterday, I was brought up in a Christian school. There's these Ten Commandments, you know? It's about giving us guidance. Honor thy father and thy mother, you know, like that. Thou shalt not steal, you know. But if we have this wisdom of our true identity and hearing from our spiritual master, the descending method coming from God himself, embracing us, you feel this belongingness. I belong to my eternal friend, Krishna. But to be able to understand God, we must first understand our true identity, Aham Brahmasmi. Whoever teach about God, the basic foundation is understanding this absolute truth, that He is not matter. He is different from His body. So any dude who tries to portray He's great, He's a representative of God, you know, you check if he understands he's not the body and he lives a life that, is, that will foster his closeness with God. I won't name anyone, but years back, there's this great, I see him every day, you know, I opened up, the, the, I opened the TV early morning, even at 12 o'clock, he's there. He speaks about God. He speaks about so many things. He tries to hype people, you know. The healing method, you know. Hype people. Oh, I want that. I want that. I have what you want. <laughs> but, you know, one day, there's this policeman walking and saw something. How come the car is moving, you know? Then he knocked. When he opened the door, wow. There's this great dude, you know, talking about God, about purity, very sanctimonious about how holy he is. With prostitutes, three prostitutes. He was caught by the policeman. That is why it's very important that we check the character of whom we should follow. And one character of a bona fide spiritual master he is not encumbered by the three modes of material nature and is master of his senses. He's not Godasa or servant of his senses. If you find someone, you follow someone who is servant of his senses, it's very dangerous. He's going to gobble you up, eat you up, exploit you. You have seen that with all these fanatics and so-called gurus who portray themselves sanctimoniously that they are pure, they're going to save you. What did they do? Look at Jim Jones. How many people did he kill? Look at the time of the crusade. How many millions of people were killed because of sectarian teaching? This world is a world of suffering. And now we are guided to enter a world that is not touched by the suffering. And it is a world of transcendental relationship with the Supreme Person. So Lord Chaitanya came and he emphasized his eight six sastaka and all his disciples wrote a lot of books. Our instructing spiritual master, his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami coming in the line of the literary incarnation of the Supreme Person who put into writing the teachings of the past times of the Supreme Person and His Divine Grace translated it to English so we can understand it. And our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, guides us in this contemporary world so we can enter that world. But it begins with a meditation that will purify our heart, will give us clarity of our true identity. Aham Brahmasmi. Spiritual life is very serious. It's not something you join because there's no joining. It is uncovering the cover that has separated us from this relationship. It's about becoming free from lust. It's a relationship that is true. 
pure. For example, a mother who loves a child, then she leaves something, a very valuable, a purse with all the money. Then while cooking, there's a, a mirror, and she saw her child just got something from the purse. And then during lunchtime, she tells, oh, I lost $300. Who took it? And the child, I don't know, mommy. I don't know anything about it, you know? But she showed the child. So it gives pain to the mother that the relationship is tinged with lies. That's how we deal in this world. And how can we enter that world? Lord Chaitanya tells us, one can chant the holy names of the Lord in a humble state of mind, mind, feeling himself lower than the straw in the street, more tolerant than the tree, and devoid of all sense of false prestige, and ready to offer all respects to others. It is humbleness, but it's very hard for us in this world. We, to be loved, we have to show something. I got something. If you scratch my back, I'm going to scratch your back. I'm going to give you something, you know. But when we come to the point of understanding how we are really lost, blinded in this world, and we're all alone, we feel in our heart that, yes, I am insignificant. But my spiritual master tells me, the love that Lord Krishna has for me is unconditional. He loves me eternally. So I can fall down on my head, bow down. My Lord, I'm lost. <laughs> I've been trying to, you know, for so long, trying to beat Maya or illusion, and I'm always getting kicked in the face. I'm trying to play Lord, but in the end, I become enslaved and encumbered by my senses. I become driven by lust, thinking I'm master, but in the end, I become enslaved by the senses. For so long, I am suffering. But because my spiritual master tells me, Lord Chaitanya advised me, I can fall down on my head, bowing down to you, please let me enter that world wherein I can take part in rendering loving service to you. That is the main meditation and focus of this program. So I'll read to you the glories of the holy names. <laughs> Glory to Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years together. Thus, the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death is extinguished. The Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large. Because it spread the rays of benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss. And it helps to have a taste of full nectar which, all, which we are always anxious. Our true nature is we're eternally the loving servant of the Supreme Person. Our world is a world of rendering devotional loving service either in servitude, in friendship, in different relationship, degrees of relationship that is amiable, that is transcendental, that connects our heart, our life with the pleasure of God. Lord Krishna tells us, love me. He's the one wooing us already. The love is already there. So all we have to do is see in ourselves what separates us, what our activities, does it foster this closeness with Him, amiably in harmony with His heart, with His desire? 
Then he gives us a guidance. What separates us? It is the contamination of lust. It is about how selfish we are. And it has driven us mad and crazy and blinded us. Blinded us from this absolute truth where there is nectar, where there is eternal bliss, where there is ananda or meditation in loving relationship with the Supreme Person. O oh my Lord, your holy name alone can render all benediction upon the living beings. And therefore you have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna, Govinda, etc. In these transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental energies. And there is no hard and past rules for chanting these holy names. O oh my Lord, you have kindly made approach to you easy by your holy names. But unfortunate as I am, I have no attraction for them. In the beginning, we have no attraction. But when we say the holy names, it's like it begins to purify our heart. Krishna. Then the holy names dances on our tongue because it enters our ear coming from the lips of the confidential loving servant of God, giving us this world that will connect us with God's love. We have no attraction. Why? Because we are desire driven. Our master is our mind. And what drives us is the lust, anger and greed. Anger when you're frustrated that you cannot get what you want. Greed. It's all about us. You know? You want. Sina suya ba? Lust. You know? It is a focus upon this world that is temporary and the living entity, us, who is different from matter, is trying very hard to consume matter. We become a monster, ma monster. It's like a vacuum cleaner. Ooh. How do we do that? With our through our senses, through the eyes, through the ears. Ooh. All like vacuum cleaners. Ooh. But it's never feeling. In the end, you live alone. So Lord Jesus Christ is telling that where your heart is, that's where your mind will go. So in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells us, whatever state of mind you remember at the time you leave this world, that state you will attain. There are many states, not United States. Huh? <laughs> so we should sit down, meditate, and ask ourselves, where am I heading? What do I really have? Is the goal I'm trying to pursue will really be my shelter? You've seen now with what's happening. Everybody's being dominated by COVID-19. And everybody's in anxiety, you know. My dreams come to an end. And some invested so much, building up hotels, you know, buying so many trucks for business. But now what's happening? Down the drain, your control has gone awry because you're not really in control. It is a sign now to think. Yes, am I, do I really belong in this world? Whom should I listen? Where will I repose or direct my focus and my heart? Will it be guided by so-called religious teacher who are ignorant of their identity? They don't know who they are and their focus is about the congregation, the building, the membership. At the end, it's not, you know, there's this song in the Philippines, holding hands or hawa kamay. 
You may be holding hands with everybody, but when you leave this world, even the hands that holds, the different hands there, or the embrace, it will just be cut up. Because the body will just break down. And you're there holding, standing with nothing, an empty heart. That's why it's very important while living in this world, in this body now, our meditation, we should invest with what is eternally connected with our life and our heart. So while we're living in this world, either as a teacher, a mother, a businessman, our meditation should be a connection with our love, with our heart, with the will, the embrace of Lord Krishna, the sweetness of His love. Then, when we become purified by chanting the holy names, we begin to appreciate how I'm not fit for all this kindness, for all this give, the generous generosity, how I am so hard-hearted, how I have dropped, I have just thrown everything away and become so selfish. But in my inner core, there is a glimpse. I want to be in that world. And comes this humbleness in our heart that this trust that the love that Krishna has for us, our spiritual master, has no condition. Either we don't love him or we love him, he loves us eternally. So we become, we feel unqualified. But it doesn't mean that when we feel we're so dirty and unqualified, our mind is muddled, I'll just go jump in the mud and be with, engage in so many simple activities because Maya comes in again. I am humble. I'm gonna, I'm not, I have been doing a lot of nonsense things, you know, and I feel I just muddle in the mud with all the maggots. I'm not qualified. No! The more the person makes progress, he feels humble, humbleness in his heart, and he makes effort to relate with trust, his faith, that he persevere. No more playing games of, I am a humble devotee. No more like that. It's simply focus upon loving. Like when in this world, when someone falls, not fall, when one gets in love. Here in Madonna, they fall in love. <laughs> when you're really in love, as individuals, as living person, you experience what is love is when you're focusing simply on pleasing a person, wanting to do what she wants, trying to do, offer everything to her. But because this, the relationship is not eternal, that can be transcendental when it's focused upon our eternal friend our true lover, the Supreme Person. And we feel, I'm not qualified. I'll just be doing every day in meditation like all the great Vaishnavas. They feel unqualified. They're just waiting, waiting, taking part in doing what is pleasing to their spiritual master. Not wanting anything, just simply be a part of what is pleasing to him. Render service according to whatever he can do in humility, in humbleness. Because in the truest sense, that love that we're longing for, when we're in harmony with the Lord's love, we are trying to please Him and be with Him, it's up to Him. He enhances our love for Him. Just like when you see the pastimes of Lord Krishna in Vrindavan, Lord Krishna leaves Vrindavan, goes to Dwarka, but all the residents of Vrindavan, the daily grind they do, the cooking, their meditation is upon the sweet memories that is eternal, 
that is transcendental, the beauty of Krishna, the kindness of Lord Krishna, the sweetness, the young boys, their friend, the cowherd boys and the cows, they're all simply brokenhearted, meditating upon the Supreme Person, Lord Krishna, who is in Dwarka. But Lord Krishna never leaves Vrindavan because the meditation is transcendental. So that is being guided to us, the holy names and the meditation of the pastimes of the Supreme Person is eternal. It purifies the heart. It connects us with that love. And that is learned through the able guidance of the pure lover of God. So no one can teach us about the science of love for God until a person is a lover of God. So the bona fide spiritual master is a lover of God. And he wants us to be a lover of God also. By true nature, we're all loving servants of God, loving friend of God. But we, our world now is a world, you know, this world. We have become, it's like a movie, but we have now become the real actors in this world, trying to play different roles. So it's high time to sit down and uh, listen and try to adhere and focus. Where can I give my life? Where can I focus my whole life? And then we can see our frailties, how far we are, how we fall far short, because we have been contaminated by the selfish motivation in our heart. We have become hard-hearted. We have become takers, not givers. There is a saying, the more you give, the more you have. The more you give your heart, the more you give your love the more you're in the world of this love of loving world of serving Krishna. So that should be what we should ask in ourselves. How close am I with that world? And that world that is transcendental and eternal is what Lord Chaitanya came in and our Gurudev trying to connect us. But it's a choice we should be making. It is a choice we should be weighing. It is a choice which we should be deciding if we want that. It's up to us. Either the desert world, the desert sun, we live as desert people, or we live in the oasis where there is water. We want to live in the jungle of material life, where every step there is danger. We want to live in a world where we are encumbered by this body, but the devotee, it doesn't matter to him. He prays. His Lord Chaitanya is praying. It does not matter as long as he's engaged in loving service, in devotional service. Either to be born again, life after life, doesn't matter. Because his world is transcendental and he's wanting us to be in that world. Haribol Namaste. Namusida Surupananda Paramaham Salamine Gora Karuna Surupaya Radha Krishna Prestaya Te Namusida Surupananda Oh, yeah.
jaya guru dehi jaya jaya turanga study program so see you again tomorrow harbal namaste thank you very much